Junior Cert Geography Chapter 1 The Earth 1.1 The Earth and Plate Movements These are the key words that we're going to look at in this chapter. Solar System, Solar Energy, Equator, Crust, Mantle, Core, Magma, Plates, Plate Boundaries, Convection Currents, Continental Drift, Fissure, Constructive Plate Boundary, Destructive Plate Boundary, Conservative Plate Boundary, Pacific Ring of Fire. You should be able to explain what all of these means for the Junior Cert. This is a satellite image of the Earth and it is shaped like a sphere. Planet Earth lies in our solar system. The solar system is made up of eight planets, their moons and the suns. The planets move around or orbit the sun. The sun's solar energy gives heat and light to the planets. Earth is one of the planets of the solar system. This satellite image shows the shape of the earth, which is shaped like a sphere, but it is actually flattened at the south and the north poles, and it bulges at the equator. The equator is an imaginary line that runs through the center of the Earth, which technically splits it into two hemispheres. The Earth is able to support life because it has water and air, and it is the ideal distance from the sun. If it were closer to the sun, it would be too hot. If it was further from the sun, it would be too cold. The sun is at the center of the solar system. This is the sun over here and gives heat and light to the planets. The planets of the solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The Earth is 150 million kilometers away from the sun. So it looks like a short distance in the picture, but it's actually 150 million kilometers away. Layers of the Earth. The Earth is made up of three different layers. These layers are the crust, the mantle and the core. Figure 1.3 shows the layers of the earth. So the crust is at the center, the mantle is in the middle, and the crust is around the edge. The crust is the outer layer or skin of the earth. It's made up of solid rock and it is up to 10 kilometers thick underneath the oceans and 60 kilometers thick underneath the continents. The middle layer of the earth is called the mantle. It's made up of molten, which means melted rock, called magma. And the temperature that it can reach is 4000 degrees Celsius. And the crust of the earth, which is the outer layer, floats on top of the mantle. The core is made up of the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is made of iron and nickel and it is molten, which means it's melted, and the inner core is solid due to pressure. The core's temperature is over 5,000 degrees Celsius. Crustal plates. The crust of the earth is like a jigsaw and is broken into pieces called plates. Oceans and continents sit on top of these plates. The edges of the plates are called plate boundaries and plates meet at plate boundaries. Convection currents. Convection currents in the mantle cause the plates to move. So these arrows in our diagram, they represent convection currents. So it's movement inside the mantle. The continents are lying on top of the mantle. They're floating on top of the mantle. And as the mantle moves around due to the convection currents, the plates on top of it also move around. And this movement of plates is known as continental drift. So it is literally the continents drifting away from each other and towards each other. Convection currents are formed in the following way. The heat from the Earth's core causes the magma in the mantle to heat up. So the heat from the Earth's core causes the magma in the mantle to heat up. 
the hot magma rises up towards the crust. So it moves away from the core, moves out towards the crust. The magma cools as it rises because it's getting further away from the heat of the core. And because it's cooling down, it starts to get heavier. And this causes it to sink back down towards the core. And when it moves back down towards the core, it heats up again and it rises again. So if we have a closer look at our diagram. So the core heats up the magma that's in the mantle. This heat causes the magma to rise outwards away from the core and up towards the crust. When it gets up near the crust, what happens is it actually starts to cool down and it starts to get a bit heavier. So it starts to sink back down towards the core. And the closer it gets to the core, the hotter it gets. So it heats up again and it rises back up, 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 up towards the crust where it starts to cool down, get heavier, and it sinks back down again towards the core, which heats it up again, it rises, gets towards the crust, cools down, gets heavier, and sinks back down again. And this just continues on and on and on. And likewise, the same will happen over here. And these convection currents, that's what these are known as, convection currents, because they are moving around the magma in the mantle and the plates are floating on top of the mantle, well, if the convection currents move, then the plates also move along with them. And in some places we have plates separating. So we can see that the convection current was moving to the right here and moving to the left here, which means that these two plates are pulling apart. They're separating. And in some places, we have plates colliding. So you can see that this convection current was going to the right. So it's going clockwise. And this convection current was going to the left. It was going anti-clockwise. So these two plates on top of it, they actually were forced to go together. So they collided. So we have the core, which heats up the mantle, causing the magma to rise upwards away from the core. The further away it goes, it starts to cool down, it gets heavier and it sinks back down again towards the core. This movement is known as convection currents and this movement causes the plates that are floating on top of the mantle to either separate, plates separating, or collide, plates colliding. This cycle is repeated continuously in a circular motion causing convection currents. Plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is a theory that explains the movement of plates and continental drift. It was proposed in 1912 by Alfred Wegener, who noticed that the coastlines of South America and Africa would fit together. Over 200 million years ago, all of the continents fitted together in one large continent called Pangaea. They slowly began to break apart and drift away from each other, and these continents are still moving today. The continents of Europe and North America are drifting two centimetres away from each other year by year. The plates. There are seven major plates. The African plate, the American plate, the Australian plate, the Eurasian plate, and this is the plate that Ireland is located on. The Indian Plate, the Nazca Plate, and the Pacific Plate. Figure 1.6 shows these plates and plate boundaries. It also shows the direction in which the plates are moving. So, for example, the Eurasian Plate, which Ireland is on, is moving towards the African Plate. And the North American Plate is moving away from the Eurasian Plate. So these arrows show that these two plates are moving away from each other and these arrows show that these two plates are moving towards each other. A very important plate that we'll look at later on is the Pacific Plate and we are also interested in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. 
Plate movement. The movement of plates causes them to separate, collide or slide past each other. This causes volcanic activity, earthquakes and folding to occur at the plate boundaries. Here we have a diagram of a constructive plate boundary. We can see that the convection currents in the magma are causing the plates to pull apart from each other. They're separating. The arrows show that they're moving away from each other. And this is the direction of the separating plates. So when two plates pull apart, they separate and a crack known as a fissure is created. This crack allows for the magma from the mantle to rise up through the opening. The magma cools a new crust is formed. Features such as volcanic islands, volcanic mountains and mid-ocean ridges are created as a result. This type of a plate boundary is called a constructive plate boundary because new land is formed. In this diagram we have an example of a destructive plate boundary. So we can see we have the magma is being moved by the convection currents and in this example we can see the plates are moving towards each other. The plates are colliding with each other. And what happens is the heavier plate, which in this case is the one on the right hand side, it gets pulled underneath the other one. So this was the heavier plate and it got pulled underneath the other plate. The heavier plate sinks down into the mantle where it melts. And the lighter plate is buckled and folded upwards. This causes earthquakes to happen. And it can also result in fold mountains being formed. Fold mountains. This type of plate boundary is known as a destructive plate boundary because the crust gets destroyed. This is an example of a conservative plate boundary. And a conservative plate boundary is when two plates are sliding past each other. So the direction of these sliding plates, one is moving downwards and one is moving upwards. So they're sliding past each other. They're not pulling apart and they're not colliding. They're just simply sliding past each other. One is going this way and the other is going this way. When two plates slide past each other, it causes pressure to build up. When the pressure is released, earthquakes occur. This type of plate boundary is, is called a conservative plate boundary because the land is neither created nor destroyed. An example is the San Andreas Fault in California. Here is an example of the San Andreas Fault. And we will look at the San Andreas Fault again in a case study. But an interesting fact is that plates can actually be moving in the same direction but at different speeds. So to summarize, there are three different types of plate activity, plates separating, plates colliding and plates sliding past each other. Separating plates are known as constructive plate boundaries. They result in volcanic activity and earthquakes. Some features are volcanic islands, volcanic mountains and mid-ocean ridges. An example of a volcanic island is Iceland. An example of a volcanic mountain is Mount St. Helens and an example of a mid-ocean ridge is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Plates collide at a destructive plate boundary. This results in folding and earthquakes and a feature of this would be fold mountains and an example of fold mountains is the Andes. And when plates slide past each other, this happens at a conservative plate boundary. This can result in earthquakes. A feature of that would be a fault line and an example of a fault line is the San Andreas Fault. The Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire is an area in the Pacific Ocean where a large number of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. It is the most active earthquake and volcanic zone in the whole world. So this is the Pacific Ocean and this red line represents the Pacific Ring of Fire. And an example of a volcano along the Pacific Ring of Fire that we're going to study is Mount St. Helens. So it's off the coast of North America.